All right, so this uh, video uh, is going to show you how to test the Chameleon A-Bar. Uh, also, uh, the Chameleon Pick is very similar, but there's another video for the Chameleon Pick. Uh, so to begin with, the first thing is we have our test setup, which includes a PC computer running Windows, where you're going to have previously loaded AVR Studio, the propeller tool, the parallax propeller tool, and a serial communications tool, PuTTY, uh, which is the one that we recommended. So that'll all be loaded on your computer and ready to go. Over here is a VGA monitor, which is going to show the VGA output of the Chameleon. And over here is an NTSC uh, monitor, which will show the NTSC output. Now, uh, here is the test rig that you're going to plug each one of the Chameleons into. So here is a Chameleon AVAR. All right, and we're going to plug it into this rig, which consists of a VGA connector for the VGA NTSC composite video, uh, video and audio. Uh, the PS2 port is connected to a mouse via PS2 connector. And then we've got the uh, AVAR MK2 ISP programmer, which we're going to connect. We've got a USB connection, mini V cable, which is connected into the computer, which will connect into the AVAR uh, chameleon and the nine volt power. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take the AVAR and we're going to make sure that the power is off. So this switch right here is the on-off switch. We move it to the right position. The other thing that we're going to do is this switch right here controls the serial port because there's only one serial port that goes through the USB and we want to begin with it communicating to the propeller chip. So we put it in the upward position. So we visually inspect everything and we make sure that everything looks good. No cold solder joints and nothing broken and we go ahead and we put the system uh, into the test rig and we plug it all in. So we're going to plug in the VGA connector. We're going to plug in the video into the video. We're going to plug the audio into the audio. We're going to plug the mouse port into the mouse. Next we're going to plug the programmer into the programming port which is a six pin header up here and what we want to be careful of is we want to make sure that the red line is to the left. That's very important. Okay, next we're going to plug the power in. All right, and finally, we're going to plug the USB port in. We're going to go ahead and turn on the power. And you might notice that the computer is going to immediately uh, identify that there's a new USB port. Sometimes you'll see this display and sometimes you won't. But every FTDI chip uh, basically is a COM port and the computer is going to load a virtual COM driver. And this is possible because you previously installed the FTDI uh, USB drivers. After it does that, one thing we want to make sure of is where it installed it. So I want you to open up the device manager. And once you have the device manager open, scroll down into the ports, COM and LPT. And then down here you can see USB serial port at COM46. So just make a note of that because when we do this serial test and create a console program uh, with a PC, we need to mark it as COM46 and open up that port. So just make a note of that. All right, so we're going to go ahead and close this window. So now we're all ready to go. The system is on. As you can see, there's nothing on the NTSC screen. There's nothing on the VGA screen. So now I've got to load the firmware. There's two pieces of firmware. One goes on the propeller chip. One goes on the AVAR. So we make sure the power is on. Hit reset a couple times. Make sure that the serial uh, selection switch is in the up position so that the propeller chip can talk through the USB port. And let's begin. First thing that we're going to do is we're going to launch the propeller tool. And this is the parallax propeller tool. And the software that we gave you, the uh, driver directory is called Propeller Driver. And inside of that Propeller Driver directory is uh, a number of files. But we're going to load one file, the top level file, which is cam default 2 drive 111spin We're going to load this in. So I've loaded it in here. So now uh, the program is ready to compile and download. To download the program, we're going to go to Run, Compile Current, Load EEPROM, or you can just press F11. When I do this, it'll immediately identify the hardware, compile it, and start downloading the firmware into the propeller chip. And as it does that, if you look over, if you look over to the system, you'll notice the transmit and receive lights would have been blinking to show the communication with the USB port and the propeller chip. Now, you just probably heard a sound, so I'm going to hit reset again, and I want you to pay attention to two things. You're going to see a little light blink right here three times, and you're going to hear a tone, three tones. That uh, lets you know that the firmware is loaded properly and it's running. Now, another thing that you're going to notice is now on this NTSC screen, we've got video which says the Chameleon Spy Driver 2 version 1.11 is loaded and it says some information. And then also on the VGA monitor, you'll see the exact same thing almost. 
So now we've got the VGA working, we've got the NTSC working, the audio works, you heard the sound, you notice that the LED blinked three times, that also verifies that the status light is good and it's been soldered properly. So now we've got the firmware for the propeller chip loaded, now we're ready to load the AVARS firmware. So we're going to go ahead and load the AVARS firmware, so to do that, we're going to launch AVR Studio. So I launched this, you should have previously installed this software. All right, and now we've got the tool here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to the tools menu bar, the main menu bar, and I'm going to go down to program AVR connect. This will launch the uh, programming tool. We want the AVR ISP MK2 and USB. Press connect. And it's going to pop open a dialog window, which allows us to do the programming. All right. Now, this is a very complex uh, uh, tool. There's many settings, but the ones that we need to concern ourselves with first are the main tab. So we go to the main tab, and you need to make sure that you've got the proper chip selected. The chip that we're using is the 328P, so make sure that chip is selected. The next thing I want you to do is go down here to the settings and see the frequency of programming is 125 kilohertz. If yours is different, make sure it's 125 kilohertz. Set it to 125 and then write that information in and close the window. All right, the next thing is uh, go ahead and read the signature out. This just verifies that you've got the correct chip. And so for a 328P, this should be the binary signature that identifies the chip. And it says signature matches selected device, which is good. So remember, we're always programming the 328P. Next, go to the program tab. Now, in the program tab, there's three different areas. The flash area, the EEPROM area, and the ELF production file format area. This is the area we're concerned with, the ELF production format uh, file format area. So we're going to go down here and you're going to browse with this button here and inside of the files that we gave you you're going to locate cam avar test program one dot elf this is the only file you need to program each one of the uh, chameleon avars avar chip this has got the binary file the few settings everything you need once you've located that file and loaded into this little uh, text box all you have to do is hit the program button now make sure uh, that uh, when you pro when you when you hit this program button you don't do anything and just leave it alone and let it program. It takes a little bit and you're going to see a status bar moving at the bottom of the screen as it does the programming. All right, so let's go ahead and hit, hit program. And you see the little status bar moving. And now if you come back over here to the display, so watch the display now. You see it's erasing the device, it read the signature, it's programming the flash, it's verifying the flash. Then it's going to program the EEPROM, and it verified everything. You notice there's all these OKs, which means the program was downloaded properly and everything tested out and verified. So now, you'll notice the system continually resets, which is good. Every time we do a program, it resets itself. Now, the Chameleon AVAR is almost ready to go. We programmed the firmware into the AVAR chip. We programmed the firmware into the propeller chip. Now we're simply going to actually run the test. Now, before we do this, we have to take the serial selection switch and put it into the down position. This is so the AVAR can communicate out the USB port because we're going to use the PC terminal program to talk through the USB to the AVAR chip. So make sure that's in the down position. Then we're ready to go. Now, back on the PC, we're going to go launch. So we're going to close up our AVAR program. Now we're going to go launch. And I just have a, I just have a little shortcut to launch it, but this is the PuTTY uh, program. Now we, we remember that it was at port 46, so I've just got a, a bunch of different uh, predefined uh, settings right here. So I'm going to load this one, which says COM46 115.2 K kilowatt is the setting for this, and the setting is N81. All right, so now we're just going to open this up, click open, and now we have this black screen right here. Let's move this so it's easier to see. All right, and now we're going to run the test. So the first thing I'm going to do is hit the reset button on the Chameleon. The second I reset it, it puts this up.